I take it and wrap it around so that the corner of the box is roughly in the middle of the clothed portion of the Hedate, and this allows me to uh, have them rest and they sit roughly in the right spot. I take the belt section or the, the strap that would wrap around your waist and I put it behind the box and tie a knot. Fortunately, mine is on a carpet square, so I can slide it in and out and get behind it relatively easily. This helps the camera, but more than that, it helps me in terms of putting it together. Uh, do be wary of where you decide to display these things. If you don't have easy access to the back, uh, prepare yourself for maybe a little bit of frustration your first two times around. The next step is assembling the little pieces that the armor stand comes with. So there's two legs, there's a little bit of a shoulder piece, there's a little piece that simulates the head. They all slide together. I would say that this is something that you need to be also a little bit cautious of. This stand is uh, wobbly and it doesn't bolt down, so it requires some balance. Again, prepare yourself for a little bit of frustration your first time around. I found tucking the little feet that come on the armor stand underneath the hidate or the, the belt section keeps it from tipping a little bit and I can slide it back after I'm done. The next step is the kote. Now, there are pillows that come in the box or little stuffed pillows that allow you to uh, basically fill the arms out so that they don't look flat. So I'm taking the pillows and putting them down the kote, the sleeve armor, and that is the first step before you apply them. Some notes when putting up the display. There's a first little armor tab on top of the kote that I feel is a natural resting point and seem to fit well and secure well when placing it on the armor stand. Again, in retrospect, I wish I put the pillow filler in each of the cote first, so both are ready to attach and I didn't have to walk away to get them. There are cords that attach the cote or tie around. Once I've got it in roughly the spot I want, I have to place these cords around the armor stand and secure and tie it. I wrapped it around the armor stand once and then tied it at the shoulder, so when I want to undo it, the knots are easy to identify and find. The next step is the dough, the cuirass, the chest piece, and fortunately this just wraps around. It's a little bit of a balancing act, but honestly, attaching the cote and getting them to balance was a little bit harder. There are some little horn pieces that attach together, so a one horn bit slides through a loop, and that's how you secure it. It can be a little challenging, because in my case I have to kind of hoist it up and hold the weight of the cuirass on while I'm, while I'm trying to fiddle with these horn pieces. Uh, once one is on, though, it's not too challenging to attach the other. I try to balance it out and put the pieces roughly where I want them aesthetically. There's probably a correct way to do this that I'm not doing. The next step is the sode, and those are the shoulder armor. They are directional, so the tassels, the orange piece, the string that's on the back goes towards the back of the armor and goes through a loop on the back. These attach similarly to the dough. There are little horn uh, nubbins that poke out and go through a loop. Uh, this is a little bit easier to attach. There's two of them on each side and I believe there's some additional straps that would keep it secure. Uh, I don't have to do that on the armor. When I wore it the first time though, I did not attach them and I found the sode to be flopping around a little bit more than I would have liked. There are some places to attach it so it stays a little bit more in place when you wear it. Provided you put them on the right direction, there's these little tassel pieces on the back. The armor goes through the loop area here. There's a little bit of a bow in the back and each one has a, a little inlet for these tassels to attach or uh, loop through. Unfortunately, this is not something, while well, it looks good, that's displaying in my particular case, uh, in yours, it's nice to know that it looks pretty from the back as well. Now, I'm just making some effort to straighten some things out and get the shoulders and everything positioned where I want them. Uh, it's not too hard to move around or futz with. It honestly moves and actually stays pretty stable once you have it all put together. The next thing I attach is the obi. Now there's a, a big silk padded belt that comes with it and I was informed that this actually goes under the armor but when it's displayed it's typically attached above the armor. Uh, this would typically be worn underneath you and it keeps the cuirass, the dough, from digging into your hips which I can tell you actually works. The first time I, I wore an armor set like this I put this on the outside and somebody told me it was like wearing my underpants on the outside of my pants. Uh, I can tell you that when you wear this underneath the armor, it does exactly that and it rests some of the weight of the armor on your hips. Uh, it makes you feel more mobile and it keeps the kind of metal sides of the cuirass of the dough from grinding or 
rubbing on your hips, which makes it a lot more comfortable to wear. Uh, either way, this is displayed on the outside of the armor, and so I'm, I'm just basically wrapping the dough around and then tying it in a knot. Uh, I do a loose knot right now, and I will move it and position it when I get the helmet on and get everything where I want it. The next step is attaching the kabuto and mempo. The mempo is the face guard, the kabuto is the, the helmet with a piece with the horns on it. I tie a little knot on the piece on the mempo, and there is a place on the armor stand that it seems to fit really well and hold in place, but I did have to kind of shorten the little strand on there. The kabuto then sits on top, again it rests relatively easily, and I tie the shoulder or the, the securing straps on around the mempo, and it looks pretty. I do some final touches on the belt, place the hands where I would like them. The next piece is the senate. Those are the shin guards, and they basically just lean on the hidate. And I'm, I, forgive my pronunciation, I don't know if I'm saying them correctly. Mine had to be tied up, and I also found that putting some carpet samples underneath helped keep them secure. Otherwise, they slid down. They could damage the floor or scrape around or, or tip over easily. So uh, by putting something underneath it, it helped, uh, helped keep them secure, at least on my, on my flooring. Anyway, um, I'm happy with how it looks. I don't know if I've entirely done this right. I, I don't have a whole lot of formal training in how to put the armor on display, but it seems pretty self-evident in how to how to display it. There's plenty of photos and whatnot online, and I think I got it right for the most part. It wasn't too challenging to put up. Again, balancing the uh, the cote are, are probably the most challenging part, but if I had both of them handy or an extra set of hands, uh, that would be that would be nice. I also found that if I tied the Cote, uh, I could keep the hands resting where I wanted. I don't think that's that's the way most people or the way it's actually technically done, but I found that to be a little bit more secure for the display. They, they stood there by themselves, but I also have a toddler, and he likes to go and grab the fingers of the armor, so keeping them tied down seemed to be in my best interest. All right, sword friends, that is how I display it. More content will come about reviewing and pushing it to failure and that kind of stuff. If there's anything incidentally you would like to see, uh, throw it in the commentary down below and I will include it when I get to those parts of the section. If I have done something wrong as well or you have some knowledge to drop, throw it in the commentary down below too. Um, I do want to point out that displaying it I feel like is probably the most important part that a lot of people are going to do with this armor. So hopefully I've, I've done it justice. I do think that it's really cool looking and I, I kind of had it tucked away at first in a different part of my house that not a lot of folks got to see. But I have this little armor nook with a cool lighting space on it and it seems to actually fit pretty well in there and I'm not well my, my wife also seems to like it which is very important for having it displayed in a in a larger portion or the more open part of the house and a lot of people ask questions about it and it's a cool way to talk about my interest and hobbies and swords and samurai and some history components and things like that um, so if you have a spot to display them I can certainly say that it's it's been more interesting and cool than uh, than not having <laughs> having a big kind of you know, scary looking samurai set of armor right in your living room was not something I thought I would have, but uh, it, it's pretty cool and it is a conversation piece and it it is very interesting and I think it's also very pretty. So anyway, thank you to Romance of Men for sending it my way. It's gonna be on display until I run it into the ground probably and it doesn't look display worthy anymore, but if displaying is a, as a thing that you're interested in, hopefully this has shown you how to display it and giving you some confidence in putting it up in your home. Anyway, uh, more content to come. Cheers. And thanks for watching.